Uh, so honestly, Madam Speaker, I think we've heard some really good debate today. There has uh, been probably the most fulsome dialogue since me as being a, a new member here to, to this place, uh, to hear you know, the opposition actually bring together some pretty salient points. Uh, some other ones straight off to the side, but I'm not going to touch those too much because, again, that would just lead us down to that partisanship. But there's a couple of things that, that come to mind here uh, in this current circumstance we're in. And I was given some advice way back when in my career, and it was little points about surviving a battle. So back in the day, it was surviving uh, project teams. It was surviving different elements that came up. And number one was uh, keeping your head while all others are losing theirs. So, I mean, that would make a lot of sense. You can keep your, your wits about you. You can do the right things. Uh, that's one of the keys to success of doing, um, you know, something that's good and, and carrying on. The other one was leading by example. So literally, don't ask somebody else to do something that you weren't willing or capable or able to do. So you lead by example by stepping out front, not necessarily getting someone else's back or pushing them out front. The other one that came to mind, and it didn't really resonate as much as it should have, it was kind of hijacked partway along, and, you know, Bill Murray was along in those lines. But it was uh, keep, calm, keep calm and carry on. You know, we've kind of seen that pasted here and there, and it, it wasn't until recent events that that really started to, to resonate and have some salience in the members in my community and what I've been seeing on social media. So out there we are dealing with us unprecedented times. We have uh, at the height of cold and flu season when we're typically dealing with the common cold and the common flu, we have this COVID-19 that's taking place. Now honestly on a pandemic level, this is something we're in uncharted territory. So we're all trying to deal with this right now. And the worst thing that we can do for our constituents and the worst thing that we can do for our countrymen and, and fellow Albertans is to heighten panic. The best thing that we can do is to keep our heads. The best thing that we can do is have clear communication messages. The best thing that we can do is stand shoulder to shoulder right now, regardless of political stripes, keep calm and carry on. Understanding what was brought forward today and maybe instead of, I don't know, taking pot shots at what we're presenting, it's literally to try to get the budget through to add that extra $500 million that we're going to need for our frontline workers in the healthcare system. It's to understand the, the basic things. They're, they're not nefarious. If we're looking at how long it takes, literally now, again, looking at this objectively, how long it would take to do interim measures and budgets to try to get it through here? We've already gone through that once when we were first elected. It took us about two months to get that through. And then we had to go into a budget cycle, which was out of sync. And then we had another rapid succession of a budget. So now we're actually in the queue at a normal time when we should be presenting our budget. And we are. And we have circumstances that are brand new to all of us. At an unprecedented scale, a pandemic sweeping the globe, we're trying to deal with that. We have it coming into our own borders and boundaries. And we already have the budget pretty much halfway through the queue. You know, that saying half pregnant, well, we're kind of there. It's already there. It's in the queue. So what we're doing is taking the natural process that would have gone over the next two or three weeks. We're trying to accelerate that so that we give opportunity. We as private members from the government caucus would give up our position to our opposition so they could ask all the questions they could. We're really trying to get this through so we can concentrate on governing, so we can concentrate on taking care of our constituents. And heaven forbid that this thing get out of control or get worse on us, that we have the ability and the time to be in our constituencies to, to help the other groups that are dealing with it, to have that clear, concise message, keep calm and carry on. Now, I want to thank the leadership. Everything that, that they've done, done up to this point of communicating those clear messages, of taking working countless hours, taking the necessary protocols, not ramping up the height of emergency too quick until it warranted, taking the advice of the medical community, working together with them, not, not amplifying some of the differences we have. I haven't met a single doctor or nurse and my family, my wife's family is full of them, that would fixate on the dollars and cents that they take home every day, any day, over the patient care. These are folks that dedicate their lives to doing that. We've all stepped up out of our normal things to help support this system. We're not going to leave those folks swinging in the wind either. So again, this is not the time for the political conjecture, the partisanship, the other games that are being played. It's time for us to demonstrate wholeheartedly and honestly to all the constituents that got us there, regardless of your political stripes, that we can actually work together, that we can actually have a government that's functional with an opposition that does their job accordingly. And I'd like to thank the member of Mill Woods. She spoke eloquently. She raised concerns that she had. And that's the type of stuff that we need. We might differ on some of the nuances, but the end goal is always there. 
the member from Peace River spoke about this as well quite eloquently, and I thank you as a, a colleague. Uh, he always hits it on point. I kind of ramble and go on, and this guy's smooth and polished. And I want to send out some more thanks. More thanks to the businesses that I've heard of in my community. Academy fabricators sat down. They have about, about 300 to 400 people working in any given time. They took it upon themselves before we as government even stepped forward to say stay at home. They got their folks together. They had a safety meeting on each one of their plants that they're working in. Said, hey, if you're feeling sick, don't worry about it. Stay home. It's more important that we get through this together. The whole idea of flattening the curve, yeah, it's pretty important. In all likelihood, we're all going to get sick at one point or the other. It's how bad it gets sick and when it happens. We're going to do everything we can so we can't get sick, so we don't have a bunch of us. And again, we, as a farm guy, it's inoculating your herd. We, we can all talk about the herd mentality. Once you get so many infected or once you inoculate so many of them, you're all good to go. But there's that risk and that potential. And the biggest thing we're trying to do right now is to make sure that we don't have a bunch of people all getting sick at the same time. That's the crux of it. So everything we're doing is in measured steps. And, you know, if it's a father of four kids, those little sandwich grabbers, they'll bring home every bug in the fall when they go back to school. It's simply because the kids don't have the hygiene, they do those things, and they're everywhere. Everyone loves to bounce them on their knees. They, everyone loves to spend time with grandpa and grandma. My 16-year-old, he's about this big, and, you know, he can't bounce them on your knee anymore, but the guy's everywhere. He's, he's into sports, he's into different activities. So the fact that it got to the point where we had to take that measure, thank you for the teachers for working with us on that. Thank you for the school boards to to take that step with us. Thank you for acknowledging and recognizing all. Thanks to the minister for having the boldness and the courage to do that. These are the things that we're taking care of. Now, working out the details with the EI program and, and figuring that out, yeah, we want to get our money back from the feds. We've sent a whack load of it over the years down there. This is the time when the federation is supposed to pull together and we're supposed to get some of that back. These are unprecedented circumstances and we want to respect the rule and the order of governance. Again, it's a federal jurisdiction when it comes to the, those EI premiums. When we're looking at the taxation structure and everything, this is how it's supposed to work. Now, for folks to get the fear going and saying we're going to leave Alberta swaying in the wind, we know that won't happen. So let's stop making people be worried and concerned about that. It's going to take place. Canada's going to step forward, regardless of our friction that we might have with them. I still believe strongly in the country and the flag and the feds are going to do the right thing. We have lots of MPs that represent the West, and the last thing that the feds were going to do is leave us swaying in the wind out here either. Now, we might have our fights like every family does, absolutely. And you've got a bunch of thoroughbreds all working and doing this together, you're getting a few stall doors kicked once in a while. But everyone is pulling together. And what I'm encouraging and, and very encouraged by is some of the opposition is actually coming to the trough, as you would. They're actually coming to, to this place to talk about the pressing needs and they're leaving a lot of the partisanship that we've seen here in the past part. I'm hoping and encouraging those members that want to keep working with us, that we talk about the issues where you might have a few bumps, that we work through those, but we don't have much time. We have to make sure that we don't squander the time we have here in this house to do the right things to make sure that we're prepared and we're set up to go in the event that our attention has to be paid elsewhere. So what can you do? Well, let's work together here, folks. Let's get this through the gate. We have to get through some rub points, let's do that together. Let's get the funds in place so the government can function and that we can make sure that there's no concern or questions that the healthcare community doesn't have the resources that they need. The uh, folks at home, real basic stuff, wash your hands. Like be paranoid to the extent where you're singing happy birthday like all those people that prepare our food. The food industry already knows how to do that. Keep your distances. If you don't have to travel somewhere, don't. Just relax, take your time, do the right things. Stop grabbing every piece of toilet paper that's on the shelf. I'm sure we're all stocked up enough at this time. Stop that goofiness. Those are the type of things that start acting out and honestly obscure behaviors. So calm down. Do the right things. Take care of each other. Work together. If you see a senior that's out and, out and about, go shovel their walk. Maybe call them up on the phone and see if they're doing okay, if they need something. If you're sick, stay at home. Don't spread anything. Just do the right things, take the next steps. You know, keep calm and carry on. That was during World War II, during the heights of the bombing campaign and everything else. And there was a, an enemy that was sitting across a channel of water, and you would have these buzz bombs whipping over in the middle of the night. Keep calm and carry on. You didn't know if the next building was going to get slammed. You didn't know if you were going to school the next day. You didn't know if loved ones were there or not. Those folks, our grandparents, our seniors, lived through all of that. And that's what we have to do, keep calm and carry on. Hey.